Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. As we get started, uh, let's give one more minute to people to, to join us. In the meantime, please use the Menti <clears throat> instructions there and let us know where you're based. Uh, we would like to populate that map that you will see in a couple of seconds, I would say. So please tell us where you're joining us from today. Okay, keep telling us where you're joining us from. And we can see we have people in uh, North America, South America, uh, Africa, Europe, Southeast Asia, Middle East. That's great that we have good representation. Oh, wow. Southeast Asia. Fantastic. Central America, I can see in the chat, El Salvador, Annabella, Guatemala. Lebanon, okay. Cameroon, great. This will be a very, very exciting uh, discussion because we have experiences from all over the world. So this discussion will be really uh, very rich in terms of uh, experiences and the variety of organizations that are working in humanitarian uh, response. South Africa, wonderful. Great, fantastic. Boston, Massachusetts in the US, Uganda, Somalia, South Sudan, great. Nigeria, Fiji, my goodness, I want to go there. Great, okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and now that we have uh, Myanmar. Okay, now that we have seen where you're joining us from, we want to welcome all of you for joining us today to this interesting webinar. Um, we will be talking uh, how to protect the quality of pharmaceutical products in every phase of the humanitarian response. Uh, my name is uh, Nora Quesada, and along with Annabella Sanchez, we will be facilitating today's session. Annabella, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, Nora, thank you. And welcome, everybody. I always like looking at the map to see uh, how we can be together as a world in these discussions. So um, I am Annabella Sanchez. I live in Guatemala. And I have been working as a technical advisor in supply chain management for um, several decades now, uh, including health system strengthening and health advocacy as well. So welcome, everybody. Thank you, Annabella. And I'm Nora Quesada, as I mentioned. I'm a senior technical advisor at GSI, and I have been working in international development in the areas of, for several years now especially in the fields of reproductive health, supply chain, capacity building in several regions of the world, Latin America, Asia, and Africa. And I'm sending greetings from Bogota, Colombia, South America. That's why you could, you could see that dot 
in the South American uh, continent on the map. So we are very happy to have you and, and we look forward to a very participatory uh, uh, meeting today. But today we we're honored to have Shariful Islam currently working with IRC in Bangladesh. Thank you so much, Sharifu, for joining us today. And we are very excited and expectant to hear what your experience has been in, 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 in protecting the quality of products, of pharmaceutical products throughout the supply chain and in every phase of the humanitarian response. Sharifu, please introduce yourself. So uh, thank you, Nura and Anabeda. Uh, I'm Amashir Sharifu Islam, country pharmacist for the International Rescue Committee Bangladesh program. I started as a hospital pharmacist in 2017 after finishing my post-graduation degree in pharmacy. I switched to hematuria response and joined IRC as a pharmacy dispenser in 2018. Since then, I have been working with IRC in various positions of health and supply chain and ensure health communities for clients in Rohingya and surrounding coast communities. In my room, I must plan to ensure that the right healthcare communities are accessible to IRC clients whenever it is needed. This requires that I meet with the clinician, pharmacist, and supply chain senior management to ensure that everyone is aligned with IRC vision and with the partner organization and the host government to ensure appropriate coordination. I am currently based in Texas Bazaar, Bangladesh, and in my free time, I like to read books. And I would like to say hi to everyone who have joined today. Thank you. Thank you, Sharifu. Very pleased to have you today. So before we start, uh, we have some housekeeping announcements to make. Thank you, Nora. And uh, um, we have seen already that uh, you are introducing yourselves to each other in the chat. Please continue doing that uh, while we um, go through this uh, session. We also are going to have a Q&A session at, at the end after Sharifu's presentation. And we invite you to ask your questions and write them in the, in the Q&A box that you see on the screen. But you can also raise your hand um, if you would like to speak to, to the panelists, OK? So we also would like uh, to mention that, um, as in previous um, the technical discussions, this activity is possible thanks to the USAID Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance Project. And we mainly, um, our mainly objective is to train people and staff uh, from humanitarian organizations to strengthen their capacities to manage supply chain management of, of pharmaceutical and medical supplies. We also uh, share learnings with regional and global communities like we are doing now. And um, we also um, carry out blended learning courses. These are online courses, and I'm pretty sure some of, of you in the audience have taken that course, including Sharifu. And we also support partners in a way that uh, through the learning, they can also include those uh, tools or practices uh, into their policies um, so that the supply chain management can be strengthened overall. Mm, we also would like to remind you about uh, this um, humanitarian community logistics um, community of practice and education series that we are going to be holding through the end of the year. And uh, for those of you that are here for the first time, uh, these are six uh, technical discussions. And if you uh, participate in four, in at least four of them, um, everybody that does so will uh, receive a certificate of participation at the end of the year. So stay tuned for the upcoming events in November and December, and one coming up in October 25th. Okay. So quality assurance, it is a very important topic. And we uh, would like to start by uh, going and reviewing uh, our session objectives. We're going to review key definitions of quality assurance and traceability, end-to-end -end traceability. We are also going to share field experiences, and that's why we have uh, 
the honor of having Shariful with us to improve quality assurance across every phase, every phase of the humanitarian response. We will also learn from difficulties on the ground to take actions to secure end-to-end -end traceability of health products. So before we, before we um, move on, we would like, let me see, we would like to ask you a new Menti question regarding our topic. So please use the Menti code to ask, to answer this question. Can traceability be done in the middle of a crisis? Yes or no? What do you all think? Please, uh, as, you, as you respond, we, we know that quality assurance activities can be more difficult during a, a crisis, especially when you uh, are not it is a sudden crisis. Like for example, in, in my country in Central America, we are monitoring the hurricane, the hurricanes coming in. We, we can plan somehow because it is within the months of October and November, but sometimes crisis hit suddenly. So the question is, do you think we can monitor and we can, the, the quality of pharmaceuticals even when a crisis or a sudden um, foreseen um, situation arrives. And we can see on the screen that most of you uh, think that it can be done during a crisis. So thank you for your responses. Just uh, a quick explanation. Um, Menti, uh, if, you, if you are coming in now, you can continue populating and and uh, responding to the question while we uh, move on through the session. Okay, so I think we can agree that yes, it is important and traceability can be done in the middle of a crisis, even though uh, it can be a little bit difficult. Okay, so quality assurance processes can happen also throughout every phase of the humanitarian response. During the preparedness phase, however, there are several important uh, systemic activities and actions that uh, organizations can do to prepare for uh, when a crisis or an emergency arise. For example, reviewing and developing traceability processes, documenting it in uh, standard operating procedures, and also train everyone that is involved in the movement of commodities and medicines to strengthen their roles and responsibilities to carry out um, basic uh, quality assurance actions. During the acute phase, you also need to activate those processes that you already documented and, and train the staff on that will protect the integrity of pharmaceuticals and other medical products. So the key themes that we will be focusing on today is about quality assurance. And we are going to cover uh, experiences like the one from Sharifu uh, from IRC about the maintenance of a desired level of quality in a service or product, especially by means of uh, putting attention to every stage of the process from the warehouse until the medicines are in the hands of the population that need them. We're also going to cover traceability activities. Uh, according to ISO 9000, traceability is the ability to trace the history, the application, the use, and the location of uh, products, uh, the characteristics, and how uh, can we track uh, in, a, in a written and systemic manner uh, the stability and the conditions of the products. And something very important is visual inspection, a common method to protect quality through every phase of a supply chain cycle. We can also say that visual inspection is um, simply examining the products in order to detect any quality 
uh, problems that can be seen with the eyes. And uh, um, as you as you as you know, visual inspection helps us identify counterfeit products, reduce waste, and especially save lives. And talking about save saving lives, we are going to we have a surprise for you today. We are going to play a short video clip of um, um, a series called The Good Doctor. Um, I'm pretty sure some of you follow that a series. It is uh, about a doctor with autism. And in this scene, you will see that he's very upset because one of the products in the surgery room was expired. And what, what happened was that uh, this product uh, was key to save the life of a, of a little baby in the surgery room and the baby dies. So this is the reaction of the doctor after that happens. <sighs> Salem made cuts. We're, we're behind on inventory. I think it just it, it fell through the cracks. Expired. 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 They're all split. No, they're all no. It went to your no. So um, it is interesting to see, you know, the reaction of the of the doctor and the warehouse manager says it fell through the cracks that they are updating the inventory, but they are behind it. So this is just to say that um, quality assurance monitoring is crucial. Sometimes we will not realize how crucial it can be uh, that it can save lives. So protecting quality is uh, a very important uh, activity. And there are simple um, actions that you can take. So without further ado, I will pass the floor back to Nora again and Sharifu. Thank you, Annabella. And that, that video also makes me think about the importance of inventory control which is really closely linked to quality assurance is not only enough, it's not enough to keep track of what you have, but also the quality of the products that you store. So yeah, I don't blame the doctor being so mad. And I, I hope that everybody here listening to this webinar gets really upset when the quality of the products that reach our populations are not meeting the standards that we would like to get when we get a pharmaceutical for our own use. So let's get outrageous when that happens. So the last menti question that we, will, we would like to ask is the following. So be prepared to, to respond before we give the floor to Sharifu. Please feel free to respond and see what answers we get. Great, yes. So the yes answer should be the one that gets the most responses because anyone can do product traceability. And we will see in real, life in, in practice, how IRC uh, does it in, in, in the largest refugee camp, the world's re largest refugee camp in the world, uh, how they do it, and of course, how they can share uh, their experience with all of us. Because if they can do it in the world's largest refugee camp, any of us can do it anywhere. So thank you and yes, I agree, anyone can do it. And without further ado, I'll pass
pass the floor to Shariful and welcome Shariful again. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. So uh, thanks again, Nura and Annabella, for your insightful discussion. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to extend my thanks to the entire GSI team and our general donor USAID. Uh, for them, this was possible to arrange this educational series. So as you have already discussed, that today we are going to discuss on protecting the quality of pharmaceutical product in every phase of hematrian responses. So before going to the presentation, uh, let me navigate you through Bangladesh and Cox's Bazar where we play a vital role. <laughs> so Bangladesh is a country in South Asia, sharing a border with India and Myanmar, and Dhaka is the capital and largest city in the national political, financial, and cultural center. And as you are seeing the Cox's Bazar, it is a coastal town in the southeast of Bangladesh and is a vital place that hosts over 1 million Rohingya refugees in the world's largest refugee camp in Kutupalang and other associated camps in Ukhia and Teknaf. Most of the camps are situated on the hilly track with significant rainfall in most of the months. Like uh, if you want to know the average uh, rainy days in yearly is 113 and with high relative humidity, which always remains over 80%, making it more difficult for the supply chain to ensure appropriate storage condition for pharmaceuticals. <clears throat> so this violence started in 2012 against minority Muslims in Myanmar, forcing hundreds of thousands of people to seek refuge in nearby countries. Currently, around 1 million Rohingya refugees are living across the border in Bangladesh in the world's largest refugee camp without knowing if they will ever be able to return to their homeland. <laughs> this large resettlement profoundly impacts the life of nearby host communities as they lose land for agriculture and encounter a long-term threat to livelihood. <laughs> Health is a prioritized need with a total of 1.4 million target population, including affected surrounding host communities. <clears throat> so Bangladesh, IRC Bangladesh uh, play a vital role in the crisis by providing services in health and protection to alleviate the suffering of the affected population. IC Bangladesh has health, child protection, women protection, protection rule of law, education, emergency response and planning programming. So I would like to focus the health programming. We have four primary healthcare center, one Bimong center, we have 47 reproductive health center, we have 13 referral hub, we have one Sari ITC and we have supported four government Ubojal health complex. Like if you uh, <coughs> see this red and green map, it is the map of Bangladesh. Bangladesh has a total population of 165 million. It is the eighth populist, uh, eighth largest populist country in the world. Uh, still, it's host around 1 million of refugees. And uh, by hosting this 1 million of refugees, it's this 1 million of refugees also directly affected uh, around 0.54 million of host communities as uh, they are encountering a long-term threat to livelihood. So we will uh, briefly go through the pharma value chain. Like uh, if you can uh, see the screen, uh, this pharma value chain started with research and development, then regulatory approvals, and IRC started working from selection, procurement, distribution, pharmacy and store, prescription use, and we are also aiming <coughs> to establish pharma resilience in the near future. So in this presentation, I will be mainly focusing on uh, good distribution practice, traceability, temperature control, and uh, consumption. So, so quality assurance of pharmaceutical started with procurement. Warehouse also play a vital role in protecting the quality throughout its reception in the central warehouse to storage in the regional warehouse, clinics, and refugee camp until it's uh, dispensing to the clients. So ensuring into traceability is a key factor in the warehouse of pharmaceuticals as it traces the movement of product from one level of storage to the another level. So to ensure the traceability and quality of pharmaceuticals, IRC Bangladesh has defined global SOP and trained all relevant staff from supply chain and the field team on traceability and quality assurance. So a good warehousing and distribution system is only possible with established quality management system that ensure the safety, transparency, and the secure distribution system by ensuring product traceability throughout the supply chain and also uh, traceability of individual client 
and the product so that uh, uh, it can help facilitate the product recall. Good documentation practice also play a vital role to permit traceability, uh, such as appropriately filled stock cards, bin cards, store release from packing list, web bill, etc. So a good quality management is not fulfilled until it has a defined and implemented supply strategies, such as quantification, procurement plan, and pre-selection of suppliers, because those are the activities <coughs> which advance the supply chain uh, to select the product and select the suppliers for upcoming procurement. <coughs> so that's for Transportation also play a vital role in moving life-saving healthcare commodities to different camps. IRC has a dedicated fleet unit that ensures the timely delivery of those life-saving commodities to our uh, 70 locations despite multiple challenges caused by difficult road condition in the camps, conflict-prone zone, and heavy rainfall. <clears throat> However, IRC fleet team and warehouse team and with the health team supports, IRC is providing a good transportation by using protective shipping container using suitable vehicle which uh, does not allow direct sunlight and also using validated and calibrated equipment. So I also ensure that there is a written storage condition are provided, checked, monitored and recorded always, uh, especially for the cold chain. <laughs> Whenever IRC is outsourcing the distribution activities, they ensure that there is a written agreement is established with the carrier to safeguard the quality of the pharmaceuticals product. <laughs> IRC also ensures that there is a clear label are applied to the shipping container, including any special condition where required. IRC also trained its diver so that uh, they are well informed on the handling and storage condition and also provide a briefing before every transportation. As you, uh, most of you know that cold chain distribution remain a global challenge yet, but IRC Bangladesh has an SOP for uh, especially cold chain distribution and has trained and provided the necessary equipment to its staff, such as cold box set, temperature data logger, and covered vehicle to efficiently execute the delivery of cold chain. So IRC warehouse staffs usually practice three uh, self cautionaries uh, before delivering any cold chain item. Like one of the cautionaries is like to ensure that all of the cold chain equipment is ready, functional, and calibrated, and to ensure that the diver is provided with the necessary information on the storage condition and guided not to open the box until it reaches the destination. And also, uh, it was uh, guided to the diver and the in facility level that the cool box can be only opened at the in facility after checking the data logger and immediately transfer it to the refrigerator. So if uh, they check the data logger and found any deviations. Uh, they usually put it in the quarantine under a dedicated refrigerator and inform the country pharmacist for instructions. <laughs> yeah, Shariful, you know, there are two questions that are related to what you're presenting right now. Maybe you can respond them very quickly because you, you have the answer handy, I'm sure. Uh, Federico from UNHCR is asking, if you procure your health goods internationally, internationally or locally? So uh, as per our current <laughs> agreement with the Bangladesh government, <laughs> we need to procure all the pharmaceuticals and medical equipment locally. Uh, but before <clears throat> procurement, before going to the procurement, we ensure that the sources of the product is qualified with our requirement and the donor requirement. So we usually uh, uh, conduct a permit assessment uh, for the pharmaceuticals and for the medical supplies, we check the uh, origination, like where it came from, is it have the CE or FDA certification, uh, does the manufacturer comply with ISO 9001 or 13485 uh, certification procedures. So these are currently we are practicing. Thank Great. you. Thank you. And the other question is from Angela. How do you ensure quality, especially looking at the climate being very uh, drastic in Bangladesh, and how do you ensure the product get to the end user on time? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, one of the thing is the uh, like uh, condition, storage condition. Like in Bangladesh, uh, the uh, camps are located near the sea and 
uh, the hill track. So the relative humidity always remains the challenge for us. So what we do that uh, we have a central warehouse. We only dispense uh, around one and a half month of medicines in the uh, site warehouse, where we also have the temperature uh, facilities, like we can uh, control the temperature. And we also have dedicated dehumidifier in the facilities, which like uh, consume the relative humidity so that it can be in the standard limit. So also uh, this is a uh, like I would, I would happy to share that our uh, primary healthcare center, which has dedicated pharmacy, has also temperature conditioning. And we are also using dehumidifier in the camp level also, despite of being challenges of electricity and powers. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a couple of more questions, but that we will respond later. Uh, yes, during thank the you. So you may continue. Thank you, Shariful. So, this patient receive also play a vital role ensuring the quality of pharmaceuticals product. So, before uh, making any dispatch or receiver, we uh, need to make sure that there is an adequate space is available. Uh, both for the uh, dispatch and both for the receipt. And I also, also make sure that there is an empty receiving and dispatch base separated. And also there are uh, key monitor data verification system is uh, available. I also, also ensure that there are receiving and dispatch records are properly written and are also uh, uh, compiled uh, for further, for future references. I also, also make sure that there is a establish delivery schedule and route planning uh, so that uh, we uh, don't uh, we don't miss out any uh, distribution and uh, there is a delay in the distributions. So IRC also examine all incoming goods and outgoing goods to ensure that the quality of pharmaceutical products are intact uh, throughout the supply system. So one of the process uh, we are doing for examining uh, the incoming and outgoing product is the physical verification. We usually uh, uh, check for any deformities in the pharmaceutical products, like uh, if there is any cracking, if there is any broken. And also uh, for the injectable item, we also check for uh, is there is any contamination in the syrup or is there any visible uh, deformities in the injections. And uh, we also examine the packaging so that those packages are also intact and temper evident. Thank you. <coughs> So traceability is one of the key factors that ensure the supply system is accountable to its client and to its donor. A supply system that ensures traceability record the product origin and their vendor information. Also, it keeps the information of batches number, expiry date, and it also tracks the near expiry threshold. Like uh, I really like the video Annabella has shared that the item has expired. But uh, I'm happy to share that IRC Bangladesh has inventory system, which uh, can trigger two notifications for expiry item, one for six month near expiry, one for three month near expiry. So our team uh, can identify which is going to expire soon. So uh, they're working hard uh, to replenish those stocks and to make sure that there is always available stock for our healthcare providers. <laughs> so we also keep uh, those batch number uh, to identify if there is any product recall in the facility level and we also trace the individual patient and uh, their information so so that uh, if there is any uh, client feedback is coming we can trace back to their prescription and we can check uh, like whether uh, we have provided the good service to the client or not and uh, let me uh, share an uh, example uh, which you all have know that most of the donor for an example eco only allow the organization to charge the spending of the fund when the pharmaceutical reach in clients. And without a proper and digitalized inventory system, it is hardly possible to comply with uh, this donor requirement. So traceability is a key uh, to uh, uh, continue the funding uh, for pharmaceuticals in uh, any programs. And also to uh, ensure this traceability, uh, logistic management information system or an electronic uh, inventory system would be a great help for any program uh, if they can uh, implement a logistic management inventory system. So uh, here is a short glimpse of uh, our uh, IRC Bangladesh Pharma inventories. Like if you can see, there is three color. So one color is uh, green color. So this green color line indicate those, those, expire, those products expire in six months, the yellow color like it, indicate that those products expire in three months 
and the neutral color is that this product has sufficient expiry more than six months. So in the inventory tools, we uh, collected all the information, like the supplier information, like the date is when it's come, when it goes. Uh, we also track the uh, batch number and expiry date. And the most most important thing which we mention, which we uh, collect, is the distribution facilities, like where we are distributing those items, so that if there is any complaint coming or uh, if there is uh, any concern from the manufacturer to recall, we can directly trace back to the facility where it has gone, and we can inform the facility that we have the product which we are suspected that it has some default and <clears throat> need to be recalled. And also, there is a short uh, IRC consumption facilities. Uh, where uh, like we uh, recorded all the information of consumption, uh, including the losses and adjustment, expiry, day out of stock. And also from the facility consumption, we can track the expiry date, like when it's going to be expired. Is it in two months or three months? Thank you. So for pharmacy, <coughs> IRC Bangladesh <coughs> practices that there is a authorized access control system Product are separated uh, according to their different formulation. Product are alphabetically uh, categorized and orderly uh, <coughs> oriented. All product has been in a stock card and warehouse and the facility staffs are following the FIFO, first expiry, first out. All product has information, uh, including the batch number and expiry date visible. Also, control substance and attractive item are being uh, separated and kept in a locked cupboard. There is always a quarantine zone available uh, to uh, allocate the item which has some suspected quality defects or need further evaluation. Uh, there is also fire protection is available in all of the facilities. Uh, IRC's all facility uh, has the sunlight block facilities. Uh, IRC all facility, all major facilities has temperature and humidity control. So for temperature and humidity control, uh, we usually use uh, the air conditioner, we use the humidifier, we use temperature data logger so that we can monitor uh, the uh, temperature and we can take necessary action whether, when uh, there is a temperature base. So IRC Bangladesh also, uh, uh, also keep a, a great cleanliness in the facilities and also keep the records. IRC also trained its facility staffs and warehouse staffs on dispensing and counseling to the clients. And we also, uh, the things we also mostly uh, do is the individual consumption tracking. Like uh, we can say uh, this paracetamol is gone to this uh, person from this camp, from uh, this location. So IRC, uh, this is the, these are the uh, things IRC pharmacy is usually doing in the refugee camp. So IRC Bangladesh consider complaint as an opportunity for development and trained and encouraged its staff to report any suspected quality defects immediately to established channel. <clears throat> so whenever there is a complaint, uh, we are receiving any complaint uh, for a uh, pharmaceutical product, we uh, immediately recall the product and quarantine it in the uh, central warehouse. And then we uh, fill up a complaint form and inform the original manufacturer about the defects. And also, uh, if there is any distributor, we also inform them. So we, uh, IRC country program team and our HQ team carefully review the complaint. Uh, they follow up with the supplier, they investigate the complaint and uh, there is a evaluation is being made at the end. And also uh, we, at the support from supplier and their response, we are preparing a corrective and preventive action and we share it with all the parties so that uh, those type of uh, complaint cannot arise in the near future. Thank you. <coughs> so in a difficult context where our uh, pharmacy staff need to work under significant pressure and advertise, but the expectation of client never ends, only working is not enough. We also need to celebrate every little achievement to encourage the team and sensitize clients to ensure that we always meet the growing needs and make an impact on our clients' life by elevating their suffering. We are also uh, like arranging uh, periodical uh, stress management uh, workshop, periodical workshop on mindfulness for our staffs so that they can energize and uh, provide a more greater effort to this crisis to, the, to help uh, elevate the suffering of our clients. Thank you.
Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, thank you everyone and thank you Nora. Uh, this is from my side. Yes, so well, you know, you are being bombarded with many questions, uh, Sharifu, because what you have shared makes me think about the importance of, you know, keeping an eye on quality throughout the, the supply chain, as well as through each of the humanitarian response phases. And some people are wondering, you know, that, for example, there's a question from Chris uh, who says that uh, these are generally good practices, but, in an, but they may not be applicable in some countries due to the fragility context. So what can you recommend for such countries to ensure quality management for pharmaceuticals? Based on your experience, because here we're talking about the world's largest uh, refugee camp. And if you can manage to implement a quality management uh, program, how can, what can you recommend to, to other countries with, the, with a fragile state and, so, and uh, difficulties? Yeah, go ahead. So the first, first thing I would like to recommend that is that uh, uh, these countries and those programs uh, who are working uh, in the fragile uh, environment uh, should uh, have trained the staff, trained human resources. And also there is a sharing of knowledge from different countries uh, who are going through the similar situation, but uh, they are managing uh, the quality of pharmaceuticals in every phase and receptivity of every phase. So uh, first recommendation is to uh, have a uh, skill human resources and second recommendation is to have a, a clear views of the uh, of the fragility like uh, what are the uh, restriction or what are the matters which is keeping me away from protecting the quality mm -hmm. so identifying the root cause and working on those root cause may solve uh, those problem efficiently thank you okay. Yeah, and you also mentioned training, and, and usually, you know, people who are in the higher levels have better chances of, of having better conditions like warehousing conditions, transportation, etc. So it's very important that at least in those uh, levels where you can have better conditions, you protect the quality of the products as much as you can. So that when they reach the, the, the health facilities of the refugee camps, you know, they, they are distributed in the less time possible so that they don't get, uh, let's say, damaged because of the temperature, of the handling, and so on. So training and, and making sure that once they reach, once the pharmaceuticals reach the, the, the communities, they are distributed in the uh, less time possible, right? I think that, that yes, yeah, yes, Nuda. Uh, one of the things I would like to also add that uh, I have observed in some of the cases that the facility level is stored a lot of commodities. Mm -hmm. exactly. This is one of the challenges that uh, the quality of the pharmaceutical cannot be implemented. Like uh, we need to uh, set up a frequency like mm -hmm. how much stock we are going to provide it to the facilities mm -hmm. and keeping a regular routing with the distribution system uh, so that uh, we can refill the distribution uh, early we are reaching to the uh, deadline. So this would be one of the things that we, we can like uh, distribute to the facility for 15 days, for one month, for one and a half month. So not more than one and a half month if there is a lack of uh, temperature control and other facilities. Great. Yes, uh, Avukar is asking the humidity in Bangladesh is 80%. How is it possible for the medicines to be transported to the health centers, given that temperature? So, yes, uh, uh, this is a uh, big challenge for IRC Bangladesh team uh, because of the high, temp high humidity. But uh, what we do, we procure some additional dehumidifier, which liquidify the humidity and transform those humidity into water. So those are some type of machine which control the humidity and uh, it need to be regularly monitored. It need to be regularly uh, drained the water 
and it need to be regularly powered. So uh, in such cases, we usually uh, use the dehumidifier to control the humidity, uh, especially uh, during the transportations and not during the transportation, especially in the facility level. During the transportation, we use covered vehicle, uh, which uh, most of the time protect the environment, protect the environment of the storage. Great. And Martha is asking, are contraceptive family planning products included in this? process in, in, in this distribution? Uh, yes, uh, obviously we have uh, around 47 reproductive health center in 47 locations. So mm -hmm. we need to uh, uh, store and distribute the reproductive health commodities to all of the reproductive health centers. Okay, great. Uh, Tabot is asking which type of cold chain are best for storage of drugs, vaccines, and how can the drug be without an active temperature control in areas where there is problem of power supply? Like I, I imagine that's the case in many places in Bangladesh. So uh, uh, currently we have sufficient power supply, but uh, let me explain the situation. Like uh, some of the cases, it is not possible to provide uninterrupted power supplies. So in such cases, uh, those country program could uh, search for alternative solar power refrigerator or solar power cool box. So this would help the country program to uh, use, to protect the quality of cool chain in the distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very, yeah, that's very relevant to another comment that, that uh, the challenges that you face in the management of the cold chain up to the last mile. I understand that you have solar power in most of those places to 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 overcome that barrier, right? Uh, yes, uh, we have solar power in our facility level. Like those facility is solar powered and can uh, support around five to six hours of solar power to the uh, refrigerator and other equipments. Okay, great. Okay, so. Uh, let's see, how long can we store medicine without any air conditioning? So I also don't have any exact answer, but our best practice is to keep it in the air condition. But if it is not feasible, uh, what we do, like we have some centers which we cannot provide the air condition because of the remoteness and others. So we uh, keep maximum for one month of the stock in the facility level and we replenish in a, uh, in a distribution cycle. Okay, Shuwari is asking, how do you ensure proper environmental monitoring within a, the warehouse, especially in low and middle income countries where electricity supply can be a challenge? So what kind of challenges have you had, Shari Fooling, and, and how do you ensure that the, the environment so, protects the quality of the products? Okay, uh, like uh, for our warehouse, we have a uh, dedicated electricity supply uh, from the uh, government level. Uh, and we also ensure to backup generator uh, so that if there is any power cut, if there is any problem, we could uh, backup the power from uh, two uh, generators. Like one generator will be supporting. And if there is a problem with this generator, there will be an alternative generator to support. So this is uh, one thing we are doing. And we also have solar power in all of our facilities. Uh, we are aiming to uh, establish a green supply chain in our uh, programming. So we uh, keep all of the facility ha has a, a heavy load uh, solar power. So it also support us uh, for around uh, four and five hours in day. And uh, for monitoring, we have a, a data logger in all of our facilities and uh, it can trigger when uh, there is a temperature breeze is going to be happen. Okay, and yeah. someone is asking, Hassam and Stanislaus are asking what kind of reporting tool or system do you use for traceability? So uh, one of the reporting tool we are using a course called Pharma Inventory Tools. So it can track the facility level, like uh, those it can track the product received in the warehouse, uh, information of the suppliers, uh, information of the product, information of the quantity and uh, costing in the warehouse level. And it can also trace the distribution to uh, side warehouse and facility level. So this is one tool we are using. And we are also using uh, facility level uh, Excel tools, uh, which is uh, uh, collecting information of the patients. Like if I uh, provide 10 paracetamol to one patient, I just write the name 
and their patient ID number so that those ID number can be traced back to their address. And I just uh, write uh, the paracetamol column 10 or 15. So it can trace the patient, trace the uh, address, and trace the product, which product has been given from the warehouse. So uh, these two tools we are using in the uh, in the warehouse and facility level, uh, those tools can automatically generate, uh, like highlighted uh, the near expiry uh, threshold so that uh, we can also in advance tell the programs or tell the relevant parties that there are product going to be expired, which need to be prioritized and which need to be replenished. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, Shariful, you mentioned the importance of training staff to, to implement the quality management uh, program and to make sure that uh, the, the quality of the products is protected throughout the supply chain and in every phase of the humanitarian response. But Apollinaire is asking if you have enough staff to manage medications, because this is a challenge for most organizations. So uh, this is really a challenge in the humanitarian organization that staffing never meets its requirement. But what we need to do, we need to uh, develop some tools, develop some uh, self questionnaires which will uh, guide us through the quality management and also reduce our time. Like if my tool is all manual, it will take more time. If my tool is more complex, it will take more time. So we need to develop the tool simply and effectively so that it can be traceable and it will also reduce the time of the uh, personnel. So let me also uh, give an example. So sometimes in maybe beginning of the crisis in Bangladesh, so we are having a significant challenge that mm -hmm. uh, our warehouse personnel was struggling to write the stock and bin card. So they need to fill up a lot of information in the stock and bin card and two of the warehouse personnel full day engaged to, this, to write stock and bin card. So my, me and my supervisor was discussing how we could resolve this challenge and how we can make some innovation in the system. So what we did, we uh, prepared a simple Excel-based formula which was linked with the inventory tools. So when they are, they are updating the inventory tools, this can be automatically generated in stock card and they can just simply print it. So it's uh, reduced the effort of two person in the warehouse and those person can be redirected to manage the quality assurance. Like they can be examining the incoming product, they can be uh, accompanying the product to the distributions. So those are the simple strategies like we need to take so that we can reduce the time for the warehouse staffs and can divert those staff to quality management. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's an interesting question here from Abdullah. Uh, what should be first response in terms of getting pharma products which would not meet the required standards? You, you mentioned that based on, on local regulations, you need to procure from local suppliers. So if you don't get a, a product that meets the, the standards, what should be the first response? What should you do about it? So uh, let me just uh, give a brief history of uh, the procurement, what we are doing. Like we make sure that product are being quality assessed before it's in our warehouse. So what we do, we verify the sources, we uh, keep a third party to uh, cross-check the data of the national pharmaceutical markets. So we uh, did a quality assurance, which uh, like minimize our risk to 98 to 99%. So there is still risk that you can receive the low quality product at the warehouse level. But the first response is please quarantine it, report a complaint to the suppliers that the product you have provided to us is not uh, up to our standard or is not what we have committed for and ask for a replenishment of the quality product. So it would be my recommendation and I strictly do not agree to receive uh, the product which has deformities. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting question related to that from Salimata. In emergency conditions, can we afford to use a product that has just expired, let's say one week before? So, in emergencies, uh, one week before is quite tricky. Like 
if the product has a dosing of seven days or if the product has a dosing of 10 days so this will not be feasible to procure uh, for five days so what we have experienced like in the emergencies there are a lot of kit we have procured or we have collected from uh, from different countries which has a uh, short expiry date like three or four months and uh, usually those uh, usually we can only utilize two or three percent of the total commodities and rest of the item being expired and it is a financial loss for the organization so it would be better like to source the item which has at least minimum of six months of expiry minimum for the emergency situations yeah so you would not recommend to use an expired product and also no. if we're talking about traceability Shariful, and if that product in addition to being expired you don't have a history of how that product was stored what temperature under what conditions was transported a, a handle and all that it's even the situation could be even worse to to try to dispense a product that it's expired because you don't know the history of, of the traceability of that product correct yes so correct. i i agree with you definitely uh uh Aye is asking how can we manage shortage of medicine from central to field health facilities due to local travel restriction that's a very valid a question because sometimes you have uh, um, security problems that you cannot go to certain areas, but that community needs the products that, that, that they are requesting, or there's a flood and, and, the, and the bridge is, is, is collapsed, so you cannot get on the other side. So how can uh, manage how can man a storage be managed in that case and how do you ensure you distribute the products uh, where they are needed so one of the thing that uh, before uh, distribution like the good management is to establish a implemented delivery system and route planning like in advance you need to establish the frequency of your distribution to the facility and you also need to establish the route like which should is the best for your distribution. There might be some occasional occurrences, occasional restriction to the camps. You need to have a good understanding and good communication with the local government and security agencies so that you have the information that when uh, those are going to be lifted or when uh, those uh, restrictions are going to be implemented so that uh, you can uh, diverse your distribution schedule uh, to meet the requirement of the facilities and if there is any bridge collapse or others uh, uh, we may need to have to think alternatively how we can uh, transport those items by boat or uh, some other means which would be effective for those specific situations great and, and there's there are a couple of questions that are related to that one of them is uh, the push versus pull system in seasonal distribution is usually a challenge in some parts of South Sudan, is saying one of our participants. Based on shortage of storage in the health facility, what can program staff do to mitigate these challenges? Exactly what we were talking about, not to have it too much stored in, in, in the health facility because probably the conditions not are appropriate, but at the same time, you need to have the supplies available for the population when they need them. So uh, based, on, based, on, based on the consumption, you could identify a amount of drugs which you can keep in your health facilities. Like uh, according to my consumption, one of my facility can uh, highly accommodate uh, 15 days of stocks. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that the distribution schedule is being done with a 10 days interval so that those facilities can have the drugs uh, before they are going to be shortest. So a, a distribution schedule to be established based on the storage available capacity of the facilities. So this is one of the recommendations uh, which will be, uh, I think uh, from my perspective, would be effective for uh, Okay, and, and do you do you use uh, would you use a push or a pull system in that case during seasonal distribution? What's your experience? Like, 
like uh, we use both of the system we use push and pull so okay. what by push system is occasionally like if uh, there is a sudden shortage of stock in the facilities like there is a conjunctivitis outbreak currently ongoing in bangladesh so there is a sudden stock out of uh, the conjunctivitis eye drop so in such cases we use the push system mm -hmm. push system like we just procure and we send to the center that this uh, uh dispensing those items as per your necessity but usually for regular monthly distribution we use the uh, pool system like they uh, give us the consumption and based on the consumption they identify uh, they have a tools like facility tools where they just uh, provided the stock availability and their consumption and those tools automatically calculate the requirement so they just overview the requirement if there is anything need to be changed there based on their observation facility level observation they just make it changes and send back to us so we just have a cross check that uh, is it uh, aligned with their consumption if it is aligned with the consumption we have to be to send it to the facility so uh, most of our facilities are uh, asking uh, monthly uh, for their replenishment great thank you uh, uh, Shariful, i think we could spend at least two more hours uh, discussing the different questions and, and answers that you can provide. But I want to reassure the audience, the participants, that we will respond to pending questions uh, in the next couple of weeks, and we will send them the, the responses. Uh, uh, and Shariful, of course, will we'll, we'll contribute to that. So we really appreciate your patience, but we will address all the questions that you have asked. And thank you so much, Shariful. I think that you need like a, a, a drink of water now because you kept talking and talking and we really appreciate your stamina and, and, and motivation to do that. So- yes, I I also appreciate I also appreciate the participant uh, who has joined, asked so many questions, and uh, their interest uh, to share our knowledge uh, among ourselves. So thank you all. Thank you, Shariful. So before we wrap up, some ideas for action. Uh, remember that you can take whatever action you can do to to protect the quality of the products throughout the supply chain at every level that you are in, in con doing a laboratory testing, visual inspections, and other ways uh, of doing it. Uh, also relies on others when needed, donors, manufacturers, the, the stringent regulatory authorities, WHO pre-qualification to ensure that you are procuring uh, uh, pharmaceuticals that meet uh, the, uh, the quality standards, the international quality standards. As Chatterful mentioned, it's very important to develop guidelines, job aids, to train the personnel, the staff, to implement traceability actions through each step of the supply chain, each function, as well as each of the phases of the humanitarian response. Also, we want to share some resources uh, that that we have we you know we we found for for your uh, use especially uh, we would like you to pay attention to the to the uh, be aware tool for visual inspection which is a very practical guide to do visual inspection every time you receive and send pharmaceuticals to the different levels so also the the strategic roadmap roadmap to temperature control of priority medicines. All these, uh, we hope that all these resources are very uh, useful for the work that you do in, in the field or wherever you are based. So again, we want to thank you for uh, attending this uh, uh, webinar, this technical discussion. We thank uh, Shariful again for his time and contributions to this topic and for sharing his experience. I want to thank BHA, USAID BHA uh, Capacity Building Program for sponsoring this uh, webinar and technical discussion. M to my colleagues, Annabella Sanchez, Daniel DeLacy for, for their support throughout this, uh, this event. So thank you so much. Hope to see you next time. Thank you, Charifo. Have a good day. Good afternoon. Have everyone. a good day, everyone. Bye, everybody. Take care.
Okay. Annabella, you also have a good day. You too, Sharifu. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.